Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we will get Philippe to grab the science from the pod and bring it back to the station. You guys all reminded me about that and uh, yes well that'll be a task for Philippe. We'll check that the light liner has enough fuel to make that rendezvous and return safely and yeah. Uh, but first let's take care of some nodes. After all uh, as far as the return journey from Mars back to Earth, they still got a year. Uh, so, uh, Fleep and Newcast are still going to be hanging out around Mars with nothing much to do for quite a while still. And so, being able to go out and grab that science will just be one of those nifty little uh, adventures, uh, if you will. Uh, but first, let's take care of these maneuver nodes that we've got plotted. 21 days, 23 days, 24 days, and even this one for Uranus Ambassador... Two, and then we'll have uh, Philippe grab that science and we should have enough food, water, and oxygen everywhere so that we don't have to do any resupplies. Uh, if we take a look at 41 days here, well we've got 93 days minimum at Moonport 1 and uh, Spaceport 2 has 105 days and that's really just the food at Spaceport 2 that we need but our resupply vessels carry everything and I don't want to redo them just to carry food so we will just launch a regular one up there and so yeah we have that and I'll uh, I actually need to queue more of that stuff uh, we've got a resupply here and a moonport resupply more spaceport res I, I don't actually need more spaceport or moonport resupply vessels here because we've got a whole lot of them already queued up ready to go and three crewmaster a launches so yeah okay uh, let's let's get on with uh, the maneuver nodes that we've got planned. Okay, and then right about here-ish is where we want to capture. And then we'll figure out the rest. Okay, well, I doubt this is actually going to succeed, but we might as well give it a try. At least we have verified that we can truck this hydrogen and oxygen out here and they don't seem to be boiling off right now. You can see zeros there. So if it was boiling off at all it'd have 0.00, .00 even if it's a tiny amount just like the plutonium has the tiniest of tiny depletion rate but still it says 0.00. .00. So there's no depletion rate on the hydrogen and oxygen right now which is excellent. Okay, we have nine ignitions on the RL-10, so that's not a problem. Most important thing is to make sure periapsis is positive. And, oh, oh, why can't I, sh oh, I, I was hovering above the stupid mech jeb thing, and I overburned because it didn't stop in time. Okay, well, let's use RCS to fix that a bit. Yep, if you hover over the MechJeb displays, your controls don't work. I'm sure many people have had that problem before. Okay, that should be good enough for capture. We want to get as close to Jupiter as possible, after all. And then we're going to use 1,250, I guess, to do this capture. And then we're going to have to correct everything. I don't know if we're going to get into this tight an orbit or if we want it even looser to correct the inclination. Let's see. Um, let's just add this alarm for now. And once we get there, we'll figure it out. Okay, next up we are checking in on two Venusport modules that are approaching Venus, of course. And it looks like we'll take care of them and get them into orbit before we turn to anything else. And yep, so five days to that dummy maneuver, which is the entry into the SOI. And then we can aim for orbit. You can see this is this one and then... Um, right there is the second module. What we would like to do is get both into the same inclination and then dock the two together. 
that would be most useful. Right now they are carrying very little supplies. Uh, perhaps we should, I mean it seems like it's pretty far away from Venus, isn't it? It's, is this one of those cases where it was a dummy maneuver and for some reason we probably ought to have a maneuver? Because this is, this is unacceptably far away from Venus, isn't it? I wonder if things have changed since the last time I've looked at it. We recall that one of the Mars ports decided to have a wildly off-track orbit when I looked at it belatedly. Oh uh, yeah, well we have a lot more Delta V here to correct things, but yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot to actually correct things here. Yeah, something got thrown off. I'm pretty sure since it was a dummy maneuver right there that we were much more in line with Venus than this track gives us credit for. And with that much Delta V on board, there's no reason why I wouldn't have corrected it earlier. That leaves us 1,700 to make orbit. Um, feels like it's doable, though we'll be in an elongated orbit. Which also means that if we want to do this with the other mission, if it turns out that the other one is also messed up, we should jump to it right away. But let's do this first correction first, right now. Maybe I should just um, prograde instead of radial. I don't know if that would be cheaper. Usually it's radial when you enter the SOI. Mm, nope. I No, it's close, but... Yeah, I don't think... Prograde is better, but maybe a combination of prograde and radial might be a good thing this time Yeah, that's cheaper so it's cheaper to do a combination of prograde and radial at this distance And well, let's have it about the same height as our station around the earth and if we do that We've got 2,000 meters per second left, it looks like. That can get us into that sort of orbit, which ain't great. Well, I'm a little bit higher, actually. Not great, but let's jump to the other mission. We'll set this alarm so that we remind ourselves that this has to be done, and then go to the other mission. And we'll send some more fuel over to bring them down to a prop more proper orbit. We can't really burn all of this, so we should probably, and uh, because we probably want some fuel on board just in case and to help with rendezvous later. So we should aim for, well that's two days. Um, that's T minus two days, that's not a two day orbit. It's a pretty quick orbit actually when you look at it. Right now what it's saying is that if we go into this orbit, that's um, that's like an 18 hour orbit. So yeah, not horrible. Certainly gives us plenty of time to correct things. So that's one thing and we will add that alarm. Okay, now let's jump to the other mission and see what we can do for it as far as bringing it closer to Venus if it needs to be. Maybe it's on track. It is on track. Look at that Venus periapsis. So this one's fine, the other one, maybe something else went wrong with the other one, but I can't imagine what would prevent us from doing mid-course adjustment in that case. Okay, so this one is coming in like that, but we can't see the track of the other one because the other Venus port is not in the SOI yet. But this is good enough, and if we capture... This is lower than the other one, obviously. We need 2,100 to get like that, and that's already going to be lower than the other mission. Okay, but let's leave it be. Um, this we can wait until it's in the SOI. Alright, uh, that's the probe, that's the guy. So it's coming in like that. We definitely need a correction before we make Venus orbit. And the sooner the better. It's not going to cost that much. It's going to cost a bit though. 
Now you might think maybe having two separate ones would be better anyway, but we want an impressive station around Venus and, I mean, after all, we're not going to be landing there very often, or at all, um, so certainly not with a Kerbal. So we, uh, we want some good, a good platform to observe Venus from, let me put it that way. Well, we better start the retroburn now. Up. So when is... Okay, there's the Earth to Mars transfer window, that's why I was wondering. We definitely need to send more stuff over to Mars, right? It's sort of a shame that we have to have our previous crew on the way back before we get the next crew over there. There's no avoiding that as far as the transfer windows are concerned, so... Yeah, that's... As far as a continuous habitation around Mars, that the scheduling is going to be a little bit tricky as far as the crew rotations, but I intend to try that out. For Jupiter there, we have um, some more Jovian demons to launch. I think that's all we're going to do for this time around. Those might help the Jupiter Low Orbit mission to get lower and into the right orbit. We'll see. Not sure about that. I don't think it has a docking port, so I don't know how the... Yeah, I think that we'll have to send something with a docking port to have the Jovian Demons help out. But there was the uh, Jovian Station, Jove Port 1. That's on its way, so they can move that about. I don't want the periapsis to be lower than 400 kilometers, so shut down. And uh, we'll do a further retro burn later for now. We'll keep it here. And it's got 732 meters per second left. It's in a two day, 20 hour orbit for now. And uh, yeah, we'll work out its rendezvous with the other portion. No need to bring it too low, especially since it's so far away from periapsis now. and. Uh, further retro burn is not going to be very efficient. Okay, here we go with Venus Port 1 Part 2, if you will. And we are going to try and get rendezvous with the first part. And perhaps use its fuel to bring both of them down a bit. Okay, then we should start this one off a little bit earlier to make sure that the maneuver node is more accurate. Okay, we have capture, and I'm watching that closest approach distance. Maybe that's a good guide, maybe it's not. Well, it's, it's, well, it's going a little bit fast right now. We will see. Uh, still 100 kilometers. We'll probably have to correct it somewhere else. We see something going on there. 600 meters per second difference right now. Well, let's just do a burn in a day and see what happens. Okay, well, that's about two kilometers. That'll be fine. Let's get over there and then match velocities. Looks like it's gonna take 680 meters per second. Okay, there it is, approaching us. It's mostly a radial burn to correct this. Okay, we've still got a bit too much to burn off. So a little bit late on this burn, but we shouldn't be too far away from it. Uh, it's getting over there though. Okay, I think I'm going to dock them with all the life support tanks facing each other. No reason to keep those locked right now. They were only locked to prevent the launch clamps from refilling them. And we've docked. And the solar panels are in line. And so... 
we we really don't want this orientation right now but the electric charge is fine let's worry about getting them into a lower orbit and right now just these engines should be on so let's see we're we're past periapsis right now timer we don't have anything else going on so let's just add periapsis here oh I don't seem to be able to make a maneuver node well I don't really need to make a maneuver node in order to do what I want to do here let's go around okay I want to leave about 300 meters per second in here so I'll bring it down to a 12 hour orbit I think that's a good good mark to go with okay close enough I mean it's arbitrary anyway it's not some sort of synchronous orbit or anything alright so we have our Venus port two modules uh, not much well I mean we can't tell the supplies because there's no crew on board but not much supplies we'll have to send a resupply vessel before it's really usable and otherwise operational so that's good okay on to other things okay we are now here with Uranus ambassador 2 on its way into uh, Jupiter periapsis is actually in Jupiter SOI right now and had a dummy maneuver so that we would pay attention to it at this point and I've decided that instead of just having a dummy maneuver there and just getting rid of it we would do a 5.4 meter per second correction to help us get closer to Uranus I think that would be a good idea so let's get to that and after this we'll turn back to Philippe and Newcastle around Mars and try and get that science. Nice view of Jupiter but we're not here to do anything with Jupiter in particular and we'll just pass on by we're not gonna do any additional science I think we've gotten everything at the equatorial bands anyway and that's how we're passing by okay this is our initial orbit so obviously we need to correct that how long until we have to do the Uranus flyby it's important that we do it on time after all well it doesn't give me the time here but correcting to this periapsis will bring us below 20,000 kilometers so that's good I think that might be close enough I don't want to crash into Uranus 800 is too close that will be good yep that will be good enough okay so what we really need is something to tell us when we're entering Uranus's SOI because that's the next important thing that's gonna happen with this probe we don't have to do any correction between Jupiter and Uranus so eight years we have to wait for and there it is well I guess we can see when the contract is up like this and we will arrive in Uranus at Uranus well ahead of time a thousand days ahead of time before the contract is up so that's fine why the Pluto flyby was the one that uh, had the tightest time frame is beyond me but that's how it was okay well let's enjoy the flyby of Jupiter here looking good I don't know why the dish is pointed directly at it. It's not like the dish can communicate to anything on Jupiter, I think. Odd little shadow it had there. And we're headed out. Okay. Well, I think we can safely let this go out on its own. And it's got a lot of delta V, really. It should be able to make orbit around Uranus. Okay, so here we are with the Mars port complex with uh, Ares Pod A and the uh, Light Lander and the UDMH Jeep Depot. And Philippe is still in the Light Lander, and I've topped it off with fuel. It still has uh, good food, water, and oxygen. And uh, we are recharging as a whole. But right now we can separate off uh, the light lander and have it rendezvous back up with Aries Pod G to grab the science. So let's do so. 
undock. We've got 2,225 meters per second it looks like. Okay, 1.9 kilometers, relative speed 700. So rendezvous is going to take about 770 meters per second, let's say, which is well within our budget. Uh, that periapsis looks a little bit troubling. Hold on. Um, well, that periapsis occurs after we meet up with it, so it should be all right, I guess. Okay, we seem to have a nice close approach distance. Actually, we can get it nicer than that. And more importantly, our periapsis is out of the atmosphere. That is very important. To Philippe's well-being. It should take just as much delta V to get back up to the station. So we have 700 meters per second to spare. We can't dock to Ares Pod G. Philippe is going to have to EVA to get the science, but that's probably preferable anyway. Okay, Philippe revisiting the pod with a complicated history, let's face it. I'm sure Philippe has mixed feelings about this particular pod. Okay, that seems to be a good hold. 10 millimeters per second. All right. No, don't disassemble the part. There is science here, right? You guys maybe come all the way back here. There better be science somewhere. Okay, grab. Nope. I don't know what you guys are talking about. There's no science here. Well, apparently, uh... Yeah, I don't know what science there was supposed to be, but there's no science here. So, that was completely useless. Well, let's do a crew report now. Or analyze telemetry. Nope. We have to... I don't know if he wants to go back inside. But... Let's go back inside. No, yeah, there's no science. Well, this is a crew report from space just above Mars Lowland, so let's keep that. I guess Philippe didn't really have time to get any science from the surface. I don't know. I don't know whatever happened to, to the science that we had before. If we had any science. I don't even remember. Okay, well... Okay, well, we got some science. It wasn't any science from the surface, apparently, but we got some science. I don't know what happened. Anyway, orbit prograde. Let's get away from the pod before it does something to kill us or something. You never know. Okay, rendezvousing with the station now. We've got 400 meters per second to match speeds. So not quite as much margin as I would have liked, and that's because uh, in this direction we couldn't adjust the inclination at a higher altitude. So we wound up doing it at a lower altitude, which is not as efficient. Okay, approaching to dock. Nothing better than a casual light lander excursion, right? All right, all docked up again, and no worse for wear. We lost some fuel in the mix, but it's fine. And uh, we should probably top off everything in Ares Pod A just before we do anything else. Of course, we've got the UDMH here. I don't want to accidentally undock it without stuff. 
But yeah, as I'm rebalancing everything here, I think we'll wrap it up. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.